Welcome to Dev Diary 73. There's been more work on the temple this week. We added more to the general atmosphere of the place and you see some haze, fog, steam in here with all the machines. There's also a new enemy here. No spoilers this week, so I'll stop the image and make you listen to the sound as I just finished it today. I'm currently heavily involved in testing levels and blockouts. And one of the most hilarious moments was when I discovered a very old piece of coder art. See this group of Sarahu there? They are going to put on a suit as soon as they attack me. Boop. Does this Boop. remind you of something? Have you ever seen raging Tic Tacs storming towards you? I certainly haven't. Boop. Another funny episode this week comes from Alex, who is still working on this very level. Not everything seems to go according to plan. Pay attention to this pillar on the right. See how it goes up? Let's look at it from another angle. <laughs> it's, it has got enough and wants to just escape from this testing ground. <sighs> Alex, what did you do? Do you know how much these pillars cost? Now we have to get a replacement. Another part of this level I'm playtesting is this part. This is all part of our staged testing approach. Obviously, level designers and programmers test little pieces all the time as they implement it. Stage 1. But they lose perspective and only see their part. So we make game builds and give it to other people in the team, like me, who have never seen the level before to look at it with fresh eyes. Is it fun? Is the player guidance clear? That's stage 2. Stage 3 is to give it to people who don't even know the game, so we test it with complete outsiders. Coming back to this level, I really like that we are trying to give players options in level design. Take this area for example. You can go along the main valley and encounter these deadly plants that hurt. Because it's sand, you can just lower it and pass through. Aha, uh -huh, obviously the plants already killed some Sarahu that didn't pay attention. Instead. You could also find the way over here. Go over that arc and just jump down on the other side. Continuing this road, you'll come to a Sarahul post where you'd have to fight. But if you went another way, you'd come from behind the post where there's a wind element you can use in your fight and surprise the guards from above. But there, on the other side, there's also some space. So I looked for a way to get there because I didn't know it even existed. And yes, there's a secret passage I found that when I lowered the sand ended right on the other side. So I could avoid the post altogether. It's more the sneaky way I figured. So I really enjoyed the options you have as a player to play through a level. At the end, you will come across the sand scorpion enemy. I finished the sounds for it last Tuesday. And I'd like to show you how they were made. I wanted to use my voice more in general. And I have found a tool that is able to transform a voice into the most strange creature sounds. It's called Dehumanizer and I'd like to give a shout out to this tool. It's a little flaky but the results are superb. So here is what I recorded. No wait, is, is that the right line? Ah, yeah, I see. It's, uh, it's instead of... I get it. Yep. After I recorded all the Scorpion's dialogue, here it is cleaned. I imported it into Dehumanizer. And here you can start playing with different presets. And they all sound cool. I have bought the pro version, so I'm able to go into the advanced mode and really dive deep. There are different sound modules you can tweak. Every module has its own settings. For the Scorpion, I used the noise generator for some hiss sounds. My voice generates an envelope that triggers the noise synth and it probably also takes the formant into account. 
The next element I used for the Scorpion is the pitch shifter. Here too you can tweak the module to your liking. Then we come to the cross synthesis module. It takes the spectral content of my voice and lays it on top of another sample, I think. In this case, I chose a scream because that gives it a very nice screaming character that's added into the mix. Here's the raw sample it's stamping my voice onto. The last element is a simple sample player. It plays the scream sample you just heard when my voice gets over a defined loudness threshold. I can also manipulate the pitch of the sample here. Now I took the rendered audio of my voice recording and added other layers. Here's the recording as processed by Dehumanizer. It still isn't aggressive enough though, so I added a guitar distortion effect on top. You have to be careful with the settings though, otherwise the Scorpion also sounds like a guitar. Okay, we have the scream component. Now let's add the tail attack and sting sound. I used samples from my library to spice it up. And then, to make it even more juicy, I added some splatter. And now, all together, in the final mix. That's it for this week. Uh, if you come across the pillar that escaped at the beginning, could you please sign up in our forums and drop us a hint? And make sure you subscribe to this YouTube channel, like our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. All links are in the description below. Thanks for watching. See ya.